Oh, Julie, I think when you ask that question, the answer is in many respects. And I think first and foremost for us, the most immediate and most urgent need was to make sure that our employees, our customers were all safe. And so in terms of impact on us, uh, much like it was for everybody else, we had to focus on our employee safety. So we instituted measures um, to adhere to social protocols, uh, the, which have now become famous over the last one and a half years. So measures to allow our employees to be able to work from home, work remotely. Uh, meetings were replaced with virtual, uh, virtual conferences. Um, that necessitated uh, changing uh, work protocols and programs, how employees are supervised by their managers, um, making sure that uh, people working remotely had access to internet, Wi-Fi. Um, you know, sitting here in my office uh, today, I'm sitting, you know, you can see my laptop is over here. I have all the amenities that typically you don't find in, in, in people's homes. So we had to make sure that people were facilitated to be able to work comfortably from home. So we also had to accommodate our employees' ability to work under different circumstances, cognizant of the fact that they also had a lot of other issues at home to deal with. Uh, in fact, we even had to introduce mental um, health care uh, programs um, to ensure that the drastic change occasioned by COVID on our lifestyles, on our, you know, on, on, our, on our comfort zones, on our, present, you know, on, on, on our soundness of mind was addressed and dealt with. So that was number one. But secondly, in terms of our business, um, you're correct. Uh, clearly, people um, data requirements uh, were enhanced by the fact that a lot of face-to-face -face physical existence moved to virtual existence. People are now um, schooling, working, worshipping uh, online. And that presented an opportunity. For us, of course, we had a bit of a challenge initially because we had to rejig our network when people moved away from their offices to their homes. One of our strengths, obviously, as Telcom is our office, corporate uh, enterprise business. And so rejigging and uh, rebalancing, re-optimizing our network to be able to offer services in the residential space was one of the initial challenges that we had to deal with. Uh, and then also be able to give concessions uh, to people in the corporate space who are now, you know, hardly using their offices. Uh, and I must say that, um, you know, telecom staff have been brilliant in, um, and, and innovative in adapting uh, to this. Um, in terms of um, redundancies, no. Um, we worked very hard not to add to the misery that we knew all of us were going through. And uh, let's face it, uh, while we had certain challenges, especially in our corporate enterprise business, which was affected um, by the shift from the office space to the residential areas, we did have an uplift on the residential side of the business and the general utilization of our mobile um, communications, which sort of made up for the, for, the, for the losses on the enterprise side of the business. And uh, so we, we did not take any such measures. If anything, I think what we've tried to do is to reassure our, our employees that uh, with the changes going on, a lot will be demanded of us. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, around us and we as a telco that is transforming to technology company, that's, which is our strategy, will be looked upon for answers as to how we continue to live in this very challenging world as a technology company. And I think that portends a great career. Uh, for most of our employees and therefore we did our best to make sure that uh, we retained everybody and reassured them of their compensation uh, while also accommodating their ability to work safely. In terms of staying ahead of the competition, I have a very different way of thinking. Um, I think we have our own path as Telcom Kenya. Um, Techno the technology space is evolving rapidly and ferociously. And one would be foolhardy, at least one sitting in my position, to think that the competitors that you have just named are all who you should think about. This space is, you know, the villagization of the globe is such that while we are busy looking at our neighbors next door, somebody could hit us uh, on our head 
from California, from China, from Japan. So I am not too concerned about what my competition is doing or what telecoms competition is doing. What we have done is developed a strategy that is a telecom strategy, which is one in which we will evolve systematically from being a plain vanilla telco or telecommunications company into a fit for purpose technology company of the future in a very systematic manner. We have assets uh, which are pretty much um, uh, run-of-the-mill uh, mobile communications networks, much like some of our, our competitors have, but we also have our own unique assets. Um, our fiber, uh, our terrestrial fiber network is uh, comparable to no one else's. Um, we are the gateway into the East and Central African region for international communications through our two landing stations uh, in Mombasa, which we are going to build a, a smart hub upon. And therefore, we have charted our own strategy for growing and transforming telecom into a future fit-for-purpose technology company. This company has existed over 70 years in very many incarnations. What it was 30, 35 years ago is far different from what it is today. You know, 30 years ago, um, you know, the menu of services under the defunct KPTC included sending telegrams and mail and uh, landlines which were copper, which is now obsolete. Um, and now we have mobile communications. Uh, we have data, broadband, which were words that didn't exist or weren't understood uh, by anybody 30, 35 years ago. And what has happened? We've evolved and uh, survived through that. So I have no um, uh, qualms at all about the future. And I think now, um, with the changes we're making, uh, with the agility that we're introducing into how we conduct our business, how we, how we do our, business, our work, um, we, I, 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 am, I am confident that we'll be able to take on any of the challenges um, uh, coming our way. And indeed, not only that, uh, as I've challenged our members of staff, our employees, we will be the ones to come up with the solutions for the rest um, of the country and the world as different challenges such as happened over the last one and a half years um, uh, come upon us. We have decided that we're going to do a couple of additional things. One is to really ramp up and enhance our mobile um, money uh, product, Tcash, which we have relaunched uh, robustly this year. Again, because of course we are coming in uh, maybe a decade later uh, than uh, the dominant player in the market did. Um, the thing about it is that coming, you know, the newer you are, the better your product, frankly speaking. Uh, because we have the benefit and advantage of being a 2021 mobile money service, not a 2007 or 2008 mobile money service. We will um, be integrating our Tcash service to as many merchants, um, uh, financial service providers as possible to make it facile uh, for, uh, for, for, our, for our customers to be able to use uh, Tcash. Uh, we are also going to be launching an app uh, that will make it even easier um, to, 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 uh, to, to, to use Tcash because we believe that mobile money in this part of the world is an essential hygiene factor, uh, is an essential part of basic existence, frankly speaking. Um, the third thing is our products. And uh, we have recently launched, and you'll be hearing more about this in the coming days and weeks, our Madaraka Life uh, product. And our Madaraka Life product really is in response to what I believe is a basic societal need. Hence the name Madaraka, digital independence. Now we are in the age of the internet being at the same level as water in terms of being an absolute necessity and need for everybody. If you're a young boy or girl, whether you're in Nairobi, or whether you are in from Nadapal in the northwestern 
part of Kenya to Lunga Lunga, you know, south eastern part of from Mandera in the northeast to Isabenia in the southwest. If you're a boy or a girl in school and you have no access to the internet, that actually is denial of a basic right. We have a responsibility to make sure that everybody has access to the internet. Communication today is instant, and anybody who doesn't have access to instant communication is at a disadvantage. So Telcom is clear that we want to make sure that uh, we avail to our customers internet in the most good quality, uh, data services, voice services, at the most affordable prices possible. Anything is possible in the future. Anything is possible. You never take anything off the table. But as we speak right now, our focus is on growing Telco Kenya, uh, and especially on advancing that journey from a Telco to a technology company, and into a company that has a network that provides the highest quality voice and data, and has the most innovative products for the market that we are in. Madaraka Life uh, being the product that right now um, we are pushing because I believe that it's the product that responds to the Kenya that we have today. The only thing I would like to add is that um, we as Telcom are doing our bit. And uh, it is uh, our focus, my focus is 100% on what Telcom um, can do in order to uh, avail communication services of every hue, voice, data, um, to allow the virtualization of our life to Kenyans. However, I would like to say that uh, we are encouraged by the measures, policy measures we are seeing evolving from the regulator. The Communications Authority has been talking about making sure that the consumer has the most affordable services possible. It cannot just be a telecom responsibility, it must be the responsibility of all of us. And, you know, so the exercise that they are undertaking right now to review mobile termination rates, these are the rates that, um, um, the, the, yeah, the, the, the payments we make across networks. But, of course, uh, the dominant player gets the bulk of that pay. But it makes our services very expensive and very costly. So even, which is why I'm able to offer you 100 minutes free, telecom to telecom. But I can't do it across the networks because I have to pay somebody a lot of money. Telcom has to pay another operator a lot of money, uh, which then ends up being you know, in our consumer price. Yet, be, and even notwithstanding that, we have the lowest of what we call off net, network to network uh, pricing uh, in this country. And we, and we are determined to continue being the most affordable. But I think the measures we're seeing in the policy space um, with the regulators in order to avail more affordable services to the end consumer, to the consumer, is something I would like to say we support, we encourage, and we'd like all our compatriots also to support and encourage. <music>